Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. It's Marvin speaking. Um, just was getting some updates on the Canarian Weekly, um, which is quite interesting. It seems like to me they're trying to clean up the island a bit, and I'm just wondering: uh, is it because um, people who've been who booked to go out there, and because of the Jay Slater case and the the way the police had dealt with it, that people have decided not to go on their holidays? I've had many messages of people who've said that they booked and decided to go elsewhere. Let's have a listen to the Canarian Weekly. Interesting. Hi guys, as you can see, three fugitives that the police are classing as dangerous have been arrested in the south of Tenerife. This is a joint operation between the Spanish police and Hungarian authorities who uh, put out an alert uh, saying they thought they were living in the south of the island. Police found them after a month-long investigation. Now They're now awaiting extradition. But to find out what they were wanted for, where they were living, and the rest of the details for this article, please go to our website, canarianweekly.com. I bet a lot of it is just mafia-related or rugs-related um, for them to be over here. You know, no visas and, you know, have overstayed their welcome or brought in to do work and now they've been caught. But it does make me think, since the Jay Slater case, um, a lot of arrests um, has been made. This is interesting. I come across <coughs> a guy called um, Paul, and he's a mafia whistleblower. Listen to what he's got to say. This is really, really interesting. Everyone, I'm Paul Blanchard, and welcome to my first podcast. Over the next few weeks, I'll be telling you about when I was a covert agent for the Spanish Security Services. But for my next podcast, a journalist friend of mine will explain why Spain are seeking my extradition at Westminster Magistrates Court between the 9th and 12th of September on trumped up charges. All because they have to silence me. They have to discredit me because I provided them with vital intelligence that would have prevented the Madrid and the London 7-7 bombings. I'll also be talking about Mohammed Derba, the Mr. Big of Tenerife, and how he ruled the island with the Chief of Police firmly in his pocket. In one recording, he threatens to kill a defenceless female bookkeeper. And in another, when the Chief of Police telephoned him and said they had enough evidence to arrest and charge him with murder, they didn't. Instead, they came to his rescue. In court documents before Westminster Magistrates Court, Spain have told over 180 lies in their extradition request. All because they have to silence me. They have to discredit me at all costs. But I will expose those Spanish officials exactly for what they are. Rotten to the core. Whatever you do, don't miss my next podcast. It's absolute dynamite. See you next time and please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And it's also good um, for someone who's had experience in Spain as well, wherever it was. It's that, and we know there's corruption all over the world. I, I completely understand that. But when someone's worked there and understands the way it works, it just gives us more insight into what happens there the corruption side of things which is i always find is interesting because if you ever go there or um, a member of a family goes there you just give them pointers to watch out for but like i said we do know there's um there's serious mafia in tenerife we move on uh back to Paul Blanchard, 73, who secretly worked for the Spanish Secret Service fighting terror. So this says, Grandad fights extradition over claims he helped run a 60 million mafia-style timeshare con. 
A British granddad is fighting extradition over allegations he helped run a 60 million mafia style timeshare con. In his defence, Paul Blanchard, 73, said he was secretly working um, for the Spanish secret service fighting terror. Wow. But police claim he was part of a gang led by Mohamed Durba, once the enforcer for gangster John Goldfinger Palmer, who stood trial for a 1983 Brink Matt Gold robbery. Palmer and Durba swindled millions out of tourists who dreamed of holiday homes in the Canary Islands. They fell out, uh, uh, fell out in the 1990s, sparking a bloody turf war. Wow. Lebanese-born Durba, 54, set up a rival gang and paid accountant Paul for financial advice. What I heard, um, this guy is a really, really serious guy. Let's put it that way. It goes on to say, Paul says he thought it was a legitimate business, but when Spanish authorities began investigating Durba, who they suspected of funding militant group um, Hezbollah, he agreed to help. So that tells you what kind of contacts this guy's got. He said they approached me uh, when I was working for Durba and agreed to work with them to fight funding of international terrorism. Durba and 10 others were arrested in 2000 when one and Paul agreed to give evidence until uh, a long running uh, case hit a hitch. Paul was jailed in the UK for his part in passport fraud, laundering 375,000. I tried to steal 1.3 million from the bank and transfer it to me. I'm sorry, but he's made out that he was a good character. And um, look at the scams he made. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I can't take people seriously when they. Sorry, I can't stop laughing. This is just crazy. Uh, you know, what I don't understand, he's making out um, to be an angel, and then all this stuff comes up about his um, background, and yet he's the one that's trying to to, to um, be Mister Innocent. It doesn't work like that. You're either hundred percent in, you're hundred percent out. At the end of the day, I would have said he's got to watch himself because they're trying to extradite him back there, which is dangerous, I think, for him. He told, I'm sorry people, but this is, you know, it's just crazy at the end of the day. It just makes me laugh how people can plead innocent and yet they're in on it. And some of the biggest things, you know, £375,000 and trying to steal 4.3 mil from a London bank and transfer it to Spain. Oh my God. And you're coming on and making that that you've never done anything wrong it's just a joke he even says he tipped them off <laughs> oh, sorry. Jesus Christ. oh my god oh my god it's just crazy sometimes how people have got you know sort of a criminal background but they seem to not want to admit that they've done anything wrong it's just, it's just stupid. And, you know, sometimes what are you supposed to do? Just laugh or cry, but it's just absolutely crazy. Anyway, let's go on. So he even says he tipped them off about a terror network funded from the UK months before. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my God. My God. Oh, I'm sorry, people, but this is just crazy. <laughs> right let's get it back together right let's move on <laughs> right he insisted angrily if Spain had acted on that information those um, arsenal cities may never have happened but Paul said when his trial judge um, asked Spain to verify his claims it refused without their um, corroboration I had no option but to plead guilty I was abandoned when I needed their help and went to jail for six years as a result 
Um, then last year, he revealed North Yorkshire police came to see me and asked on behalf of Spanish authorities, um, why is it North, North Yorkshire police tend to have a close contact with the Spanish authorities? That's interesting, isn't it? That is really, really interesting. It was still prepared to testify against um, Durba. I said there was no way I would ever consider it. Palmer's boat, Tenerife. Mm, makes you wonder, doesn't it? In April, the European arrest warrants was issued by Spanish judge in Madrid. A copy seen by the Sunday people alleges Paul was the financial advisor behind Durba's network, hired because he was expert at offshore banking and knew how to launder millions. It said the gang used typical mafia techniques, including threats, extortion, and setting off scores to um, launder cash, forge credit cards, and pervert the course of justice. Paul Face, facing 15 years in jails, if extradited and found guilty, called the accusation farcical, and so the timing can, can hardly be a coincidence. Wow. Kenneth Noy, I mean, he's got a history. He went on, they want to extradite me as a criminal. I have solid evidence that will prove they lied about me. The extradition hearing will be embarrassing for the Spanish authorities whose claim they never claim, they never call me and never called them. I think if he goes back there, I think he's dead, to be honest with you. I have more than 30 recorded um, phone conversations with them. Gangster Palmer was nicknamed Goldfinger after admitting he helped murder Kenneth Noy, Melt Brinks, Matt Bullion after 26 million raid in 1983, Palmer fled to Spain after the heist and set up a timeshare empire. He was eventually acquitted of handling stolen goods from the heist but served eight years uh, for timeshare fraud. And it goes on to say at one time he was worth three million owned a chateau in France and luxury yacht. He was shot dead by a hitman at the Essex Mansion in 2015. Last night, the North Yorkshire Police confirmed they have arrested a 73-year-old man from York on behalf of Spanish authorities after a European arrest warrant had been issued. Wow. I think that's it, people. So we're just going to move over and get up. If I know what he did before, Find out how John Palmer and Mohammed Durba hid fugitive Kenny Noy from justice for the brutal road rage murder of Stephen Cameron. Mohammed Durba's confession in his own words. He said that uh, Kenneth Noy, when he um, murdered somebody and, uh, on, on the road rage attack, which is a very famous case back in the country, that uh, he fled the country. And it has been said that you became involved in that. Could you tell me something about it? Well, is I'm not involved with that. I'll be involved indirectly. But this is a long story because when Kenny knows, I know Kenny knows a long time ago when he started coming with John Palmer to Tenerife. When he bring him with his girlfriend, he, not with his wife, with his girlfriend. And when he started coming here, then I start meeting him everything. So I have the contact. I have lots of contact, I have a lot of things to do, I have a lot, lot of contact everywhere in the world. But I involved because of John Palmer told me to involve. And if I'm involved with it, I'm involved indirectly, not for the criminal case. I involved because I don't know exactly what he did. And what he did after that, I know after when they all leave it in the newspaper, I know what he did. If I know what he did before, I'm too happy to help. It's no problem for that. But you didn't know what he did, so you, you hit him, is that correct? Well, I take him away from the eyes everywhere. I take him away from everybody. Only God knows where he is. Wow. Do you have any other tapes, Paul? I've got literally wow. hours of recording. Wow. This guy, Durba, um, he's a serious guy and he's not afraid to show it either. And it just proves um, a lot of these mafia guys in Spain and Tenerife um, to kill someone or hurt someone, 
is something they seem to do with these, um, which is very, very alarming. 500 with Mohammed Derber and his associates. Do you intend to publish other recordings? Yes, there's some in my forthcoming documentary. And how would you describe what's in the tapes? Dynamite. Threats to kill, murder, beyond imagination. And do you hold the tapes, Paul? That says it all. And if you remember when he said um, in the first video, um, Paul was saying it is easily to, to kill someone in Tenerife. And will the ones you just mentioned be in your forthcoming documentary? They won't be. My lawyer holds the tapes for my security and personal protection. Wow. To hear the full audio on Mohammed Durba hit fugitive, Kenny Noy from Justice, click the link in our bio. This is deep. This, is, this just goes deeper than deep. And it just proves how dark and scary the underworld can be. We move on um, to um, a message that is very, very interesting. Have a listen to this. And it says, I'm currently sat in a bar um, in Tenerife. All these um, rug stories going around still sounded fishy to me. Why would you, why would you out yourself? Anyway, my sister phoned. I've just been pinched off a table, hence while we got talk, talking to this barmaid who has been working here for 20 years. I obviously asked if she had heard about Jay. She said, and I effing quote, Lucy is well known in this area. She is barred from most of the pubs and the guys who, who was with her last disappeared too. She wouldn't say no name and said, not new news to us and 100% thinks that it is all linked it with it's all linked to rugs and her i've been so effing invested in the story to a point i've even rang his mother i was adamant he was going to come out and try to have a look there is no innocent story until i just heard it with my own ears i thought i'm sick of hearing these stories but i swear on my kids my nans and anybody this woman has just told me and my sister she could say no more but she's very well known for this wow and it goes on to say something isn't adding up but i really hope he's found safe so i think these were some of the early messages that actually came out. It goes on to say, this is another innocent, I have just heard it with my own ears, I thought I'm sick of hearing these stories, but I swear on my kids and man's life. She just said that, uh, update just another waitress, it's a completely different pub, as she's, who's Jay? I said, yeah, no, who is Jay? She replies, but her tongue, put her tongue out and walked off. I knew exactly what was what. I promise anyone now who thinks these stories are all made up, I have been so invested in this story, it's consuming me. I was constantly refreshed and um, scared for him, etc. Like everyone, but this is true, I promise. But remember the saying? What, you know, what, you know, what happens in Tenerife stays in Tenerife. And I just think we've seen a lot of other stories um, which we'll probably never ever know the truth and what happened to them. I don't really, I don't read nobody ask you, but I'm simply saying I'm sick to death of all the conspiracies so I have spoken to different people in different bars, not on the strip, uh, may I add, and they all, sorry, let me just go back on that again, people. I think that's the same. Yeah, so she goes to say, I add and something much and want to know why the boy who went missing last year, um, who was with Lucy, was never investigated like Jay. I've been so, so consumed with this story. It took all my days up. I just wanted him to be found as a mother of two boys, but I feel we have all been taken for granted and there is so much 
so much more to it. Yeah, so certainly that meets the eye. Don't read. I don't give an F. I'm simply putting it out there. What I've just been told. Something isn't adding up. Thank you. Um, we really, really appreciate those messages. And uh, I think it's been sort of well versed that um, Lucy is um, well known out there. And for setting up people, that's come up time and time again as well. Anyway, let me know what you think of the videos, people. Interesting stuff. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.